Chris from Tennessee, and you're watching TJV. The sun's up again. And I've got an empty step deck behind me. I'm gonna put some, some wood on it. High quality wood. And then I'm gonna put a tarp over it and we're gonna bring it down to uh, Brainerd, Minnesota. So I slept right at the customer last night. They have a nice little uh, area here where uh, they make that possible for us. Very thankful. It's very nice because uh, it's nice to start your day right here because that means we can get as far as possible today. The plan for today get this load to Brainerd, get it unloaded. They unload there till 10 p.m., so we shouldn't have a problem. We'll get there, we'll get it unloaded, roll our tarps up, clean our trailer up. And then I gotta head to Thief River Falls. And I think I have a trailer swap to do there. It's gotta be confirmed yet. Uh, but uh, I do believe we're swapping trailers there and headed back to the, the yard, which would get us back. It's Wednesday morning today. That'll get us back maybe tonight. If everything goes perfect and we don't hit another snowstorm, We don't hit another snowstorm. Uh, we should be able to make it today. Let's not get our hopes up though. We might make it tomorrow. And then I'll drop that trailer off, I'll figure out what I'm doing then, and I'll probably head out and get another load. So, uh, what am I doing here? Everything's warmed up, ready to go. Let's go get in line before someone else gets here and I have to wait for them. Getting these tarps thrown on here. Loaded and tarped. And there it is. Load of lumber. I've got 33,200 pounds on my trailer axles. I've got 33,800 pounds on my drive axles. And I've got 11,800 pounds on my steer axle. So we are good to go. I really like it when places like this, you know, not only do they have that nice big tarping big building for us, uh, and we get to unload inside at the other side too, but uh, they also have a scale here. It kind of bugs me a little bit when, you know, there's, let's say there's a shipper that loads a ton of freight every day. It's a big industry, big company, right? Constant trucks coming in there and they're all heavy loads, like all max weights every time and they don't have a scale on site. Doesn't happen too often, but every now and then, you're like, okay, so you're putting like 46,000 pounds on me. I gotta make sure I'm legal to leave the yard and go on the public roads. How am I gonna do that if you don't have a scale? Right? So most places do have a scale so that you know you're legal before you leave, but other places, like you, sometimes you have to drive like an hour or two to get to, to scale somewhere where you can scale it out and then you gotta adjust it. And on a flatbed like mine, if you, if you, 
load it on the trailer, I tarp it, and it's all wrong, and I'm way overweight on the trailer or something, and those axles don't slide, well, what do we gotta do? I gotta go all the way back to where I loaded. We have to take the tarps off, roll them back up, take the straps off, adjust the freight, tarp it all again, go back to the scale, and if it's not right, you do it again, you go back. It's just a huge hassle. So it's very nice to know right off the bat, they load us up here before I even put my tarps on, I go and scale it. Good, once I know my weights are good, then I go put my tarps on, grab my paperwork, and I'm out of here, and I know I'm not gonna get an overweight ticket. Most places have a scale, but every once in a while it bugs me. I'm like, hey. <laughs> kinda risky, you know? I can use my air pressure gauges on my trailer and on my truck to show how much air pressure is in my airbags, and that can tell me approximately how much weight I have, but if you're loading me right up to max, it's very hard to tell precise weights unless we have a scale. So that, that's one great thing. I, I love loading, loading up here, and uh, where we're delivering to is a pretty nice place too. So I'm gonna deliver there tonight yet, and then from there, we're gonna go up to Thief River Falls if nothing's changed. Still haven't gotten confirmation on that. I'm gonna to have to call in uh, in a couple of hours uh, and switch trailers, grab a load out of there and drag that home. I might make it home tonight yet, but I'm not gonna make it home if I stay sitting here. So we gotta keep moving. We gotta get moving, turn the lights on, buckle in so I don't fall out. Got my coffee, got my brain, good. I don't want to forget that anywhere. Hate it when that happens. I'm actually really surprised that they haven't plowed this road. Like I got here last night, right? And there was still like just covered in snow. And there's a ton of trucks that come up and down here every day. And it's kind of like a hilly road. No, they haven't even scraped it. Nothing, they just left it on the road just to get packed down. It's kind of surprising to me. But if you are quick at math, when I told you the weights on my axles in the last clip there, uh, you'll know that we're sitting at probably about like just under 80,000 pounds, which is our max legal weight for the United States. Here in Canada, like you all know, uh, I'm not even close to being overweight. But that doesn't matter because I'm going to America. If everything works just right, it should take me about 10 and a half hours of driving to get down to Brainerd and get back up to the Emerson, Manitoba border. 10 and a half hours, and once I cross back into Canada, I get a little bit of extra time, right? Because our hours of service are a little different, then I can get home. But, uh, you know, I'm not gonna hold my breath. You've seen how this fall season and this autumn season has been treating me so far. We'll see how far it'll let me get today. It also depends if there's a lineup where I'm going to unload. There I've been having good luck lately. I just pull in, pull my tarps off, get unloaded, boom, I'm out of there in less than an hour. If that's the case today, then uh, there's hope for us. But if there's like four trucks in line, well, I guess I'll start planning on where I'm gonna sleep. Now this up here is this crazy corner. The road comes from back here, right? And then it loops around and goes back that way. Speed limit on that highway is 90 kilometers an hour, but everyone's doing like 130. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but people go fast down this road. The average speed is probably like 105 at least. That's an Ontario thing. Speed limits are a suggestion to uh, a lot of cars in <laughs> Ontario. But that being said, what I mean by what I'm saying here is that I can't see them coming from there and I can't see them coming from there. So really, you just gotta wait here for a while. I don't see anyone coming. Slowly make your move, turn on your four ways. Check your mirror, see if there's anybody whipping around the corner there. Just hope they're paying attention. There are signs that are warning them, like uh, right up here around the corner, there's a sign for this lane and a sign for this direction. 
uh, letting them know that there's trucks turning in on a blind corner. So they, they have been warned. They don't have an excuse, really. six I choose you again this takes us down to uh, Deer River in about 65 miles just a winter wonderland out here today See, this is the part of winter that I say I'm totally okay with. The snow is on the, on the trees, in the ditch, on the houses. It's not on the road. It's a beautiful time of year, right? Totally fine with it. It's only minus three Celsius. I wish all winter was like this. I just don't like it when it's on the road.
good winter day to go trucking. Well, good autumn day. I keep calling it winter. It's, it's still fall. It's still autumn right now. coming into Deer River, Minnesota. And there's a strange driving habit that the guy in front of me here, his little four-wheeler, is uh, partaking in that I'm sure a lot of you have experienced before. Speed limit out in the countryside before we got to town was 60 mile an hour, right? The guy was doing no more than 45 to 50. And now, Karen, I'm telling a story. See, he's slowed down now. But when we first got in town, so he doesn't want to go the speed limit on the highway for whatever reason. The roads are good. But as soon as we get into town, the speed limit is 30 mile an hour, right? And he's just blowing through town. He must have realized he was speeding because now he's slowed down and I caught up to him here again. But have you guys ever experienced that? You're following someone who's on a two lane highway and just refuses to do anywhere near the speed limit? But as soon as they get to town or to a construction zone, they just blow through it. They have no problem speeding in town. They don't want to go too fast on the highway. Have you ever experienced that? Because that seems to be like a phenomenon. I wonder why. Why that is. Are people just not paying attention maybe? Or what do you think would make them do that? So I've always wondered that. If if Because in my mind, if you'd want to speed anywhere, right? You'd think it would be out on the highway where there's no one else around. Why do so many people insist on speeding through a populated area where, you know, there could be children playing, but refuse to do the speed limit outside the highway where it's all free and open? Strange, right? Meters, turn left on. Oh, he's going our way too. Oh, come on. If you've never noticed this driving habit in people before, Oh, no, he's turning here. Oh, good, good, good. Yes, get off the road. Good choice. Good choice. Yeah, you you stay out of my way. If you haven't noticed that driving habit in people before, I can tell you're not a truck driver. <laughs> Every truck driver knows what I'm talking about. It's the same thing like when you're uh, on a two-lane road, let's say going through British Columbia or Northern Ontario. Two-lane road, speed limit is 90 kilometers an hour, right? But there's, there's always one person that wants to do like 70. Way below the speed limit, right? Really frustrating, but you're being super patient. You're waiting for a passing lane to come up, right? And as soon as the passing lane arrives, suddenly they can do 130. And they just take off. And you're like, all right, well, I'm glad you decided to speed up, right? No, no. As soon as the passing lane's over, they slow right back down to 70 in a 90 zone. And this isn't something that happens like every now and then, like, oh, look, there's another one. No, this happens every single day. It's so strange. So strange. Because I guess since I'm a, I drive for a living, I'm always aware of what my vehicle's doing, what my speed is. I guess there's just a lot of people out there who don't pay attention to how fast they're going, if they're slowing down and speeding up. They're just meandering their way down the road strangest thing. So am I alone in this? Like, am I the only one? I'm not trying to complain here, but I am, I guess, in a way, roundabout way complaining, because uh, I want to know if you guys see this happening too. I see it every single day. No joke, not even exaggerating. Every single day. As soon as you're on a two-lane road, they really stick out, because you can't get around them. So that was Deer River. I gotta turn right up ahead here on the 6. And we have about another hour and a half down to Brainerd, a little less. I'm waiting for that driver. And I wanna cue all the typical trucker jokes right now, like, oh, it must be nice to get paid by the hour. Wonder how much he's making an hour. So yeah, as soon as, uh, as, soon as he gets done there, I might walk over there, figure out what's going on. 
And I've been waiting here for quite a while already. I'm all, all my tarps are rolled up. Everything's all ready to go. I just need to get in there. Get my freight off just like that. That's, that's, that's how it sounds when you speed it up. Just all the freight just falls off. And then I gotta, I gotta get, eh, I gotta get over to Thief River Falls tonight, right? Patience, right? What am I? What have I always said? To be a truck driver, you have to have patience. And believe me, you're gonna be tested. There is a test to this quiz. There is a quiz to this test. There is a quiz and a test. Your patience will be tested every day. And like this now, I don't know what's taking so long. All they have to do is take four lifts off. Two. Like they can take it off in two, one on that side, one on this side. Get him out of there. And I don't know what took so long rolling his tarps up either. Like, he had help doing it too. And I'm, I don't think I'm that fast. Like I rush. You don't want to drag your feet. You work as fast as you can safely, right? I got all my stuff done. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Patience, Josh. Patience. Patience, let's draw, let's draw a happy face. That'll make us happy. Let's do a little Bob Ross, okay? We're gonna make this window a happy window. Yes. There you go. We're happy. Well, they got me unloaded. They took their sweet time. That's okay. Sometimes they're quick, sometimes they're busy. We should have no problem getting to Thief River Falls, getting our new trailer. It's sitting there already preloaded, waiting for us. Trailer 126D. Tie it down real quick. It won't take long. I think it'll be like eight straps. Real easy. And we'll see how far we can get towards home tonight yet. I mean, if we do get back, it'll be really late. But I am already cleared to cross the border with that load, or that load is cleared. So if I can make it to the border on my hours, I can cross. And of course, it started snowing, because it wouldn't be a Trucker Josh vlog without snow falling from the sky hopefully it doesn't get too much worse than this this isn't so bad i don't think the camera's even picking it up but it is snowing it's dusting 600 meters turn left on washington street mm 210 it's spitting on us so to speak the heavens are spitting on us They're laughing at us It doesn't get any worse. <laughs> I want to try to get as much out of this week as I can yet. Tomorrow's Thursday. Meters. Turn left on Washington Street, MM 210. Tomorrow's Thursday, so if I can be in the yard in the morning, get unloaded, I can still get a couple more loads done this week yet. Always pushing ourselves to the max, to the legal maximum. That's footage. Continue on this road for 35 kilometers. Truck stop and sleep here and then go get my trailer in the morning. 
I'm able to get into the yard at night, but uh, it doesn't really matter if I pick it up tonight or in the morning. So I'm going to get a good rest. I'm a little tired to tie it down and everything. You know, you don't want to do that when you're too tired, then you might miss something. Been driving for almost 600 miles already. So, uh, I'm trying to navigate my way around this roundabout. I hate roundabouts. And I know, I know, they're better for fuel economy, tractor trash. I know. I don't care. I still hate them. <laughs> so I'm going to go park for night and we'll just go pick up the load in the morning, tie it down in the morning. That's fine. I'm not going to get home any later anyways because I'd have to go to bed right after I pick the load up. Anyway, right? So, one more roundabout. Just because. Thanks, Thief River. These are new. They uh, they built these in the last couple of years. It used to just be a regular stop sign here. You know, like a normal intersection. Now we got this thing. Let's gotta go turn all the way this way and turn all the way this way. Wear out my steer tires. Drag my trailer over that little bump. Wear out my, my other tires. There we go. And here's their little truck stop. I don't think it's a 24 hour truck stop, but it's a truck stop. This is where I will lay my head down. This is home tonight. Well, sort of. Home is where the family is, and the family's not here, so. Not quite home, but. closest thing I got tonight. <sighs> Found a spot here in the back of the neighbor right over there. Seems pretty quiet here. I am tired. Very, very tired. Oh, man. Oh. So first thing in the morning, I'll wake up, I'll run across town, switch the trailers like I was just telling you. Oh yeah, I forgot to drink my V8. I'm trying to get my vegetables in. And then we'll head home. By the time I get home tomorrow, there probably won't be anything for me to leave with tomorrow. Well, I might be able to go in a general direction, but I'm thinking I'll be able to go home for the day, maybe like for supper, for the evening, afternoon. Maybe he'll send me to Kenora again. I don't know. We'll see what they decide. <sighs> that would work kind of nice, especially if they had another backhaul like this. I'd probably get home on Saturday then, though. Hmm. It all depends. We'll see what they got for me. For now, I'm going straight to bed. I'm not even editing my video. Nothing. No energy for that tonight. We can worry about that tomorrow morning. Have a good one, everybody. Thanks for tagging along with me today. Thanks for tagging along with me always and all my videos. Those of you who have been with me for years and years, I appreciate it. I appreciate you and all of you new people as well that are brand new. If you're brand new, welcome here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you guys hit the like button, it helps me a lot. Leave me a comment down below of anything you want. Helps a lot with the algorithms just to push the video out to more people. We are having a little bit of a surge of growth right now in the last month, and that's very exciting. That's very good. Uh, Let's keep the ball rolling on that, and I need your help to do that. So please share my videos, uh, share out the link, send people back here, and tell them to subscribe. And we'll uh, keep this ball rolling. I am so tired. Tomorrow, I'll see you. Tomorrow, then. Tomorrow. 
I don't know if you can see this or not. Some of you ask about this. Sometimes my, my belt is like the, I undo my belt for while I'm driving because it's very uncomfortable to have it belted up. Belted up? Done up? Bolted? Done. It's just my belt. Be happy. Remember my happy face.